telling us to enjoy it while they're young. But our days are filled with chaos and stress and cooking and endless laundry piles. Where's the time to enjoy anything? Yeah, that's what I always thought too. There's so much I have to do. When do I find time for peace and joy and happiness when I barely have time to sleep? Mama, it's time for a shift. You can be a happy mom. Yeah, it's possible. If I can, you can. Trust me. I've been a mess. I've been depressed. I've been overwhelmed. I've been to the bottom of the pits. And I've risen. I've grown. I've bloomed. And it all started when I realized I didn't have to anything. I get to. It is my privilege and my honor and my divine responsibility to be the queen of my home. It's not a burden. I'm not the janitor and the lunch lady. I'm in charge. I'm the ruler. I'm the chaos coordinator. I'm the calm in the storm. I don't have to anything. I get to. So do you. So let's rise, mamas. Adjust your crown. Accept your responsibility. And change the effing world. It's all in the way you choose to see it. You're listening to I Get To, the podcast with Brittany Clarkson. That's me. Hey, my friends. So today I want to talk about reframing the way you think of your house chores, your home care tasks. Um, if you've listened to me ever before, you know, I, I've weaved this into many episodes that I am not a fan of house cleaning or, you know, really the, the homemaking tasks. Um, it's funny that my heart is to be such a homemaker and yet I don't, I find it very hard. Not just do I not only find joy, like I don't find joy in cooking and cleaning and baking, and all that kind of stuff, I like, I very much dislike it, and I have a very hard time doing it with love in my heart, and that has been such a journey for me in changing my heart about all of these everyday tasks that just don't always feel good for me to do. Um, I recently read a book called How to Keep House While Drowning by Casey Davis, And in this book, she says, you don't exist to serve your space. Your space exists to serve you. And that was a bit of a light bulb moment for me. Um, If your home is a source of stress for you, if you're serving it, if you're allowing it to be an idol, you know, if a clean home is an idol for you, If your home is starting to come before other important priorities in your life, flip those effing tables. Okay? I don't necessarily mean the tables in your home, but I mean, it's like Jesus in the temple. When he walked in and found that people were not in there worshiping God, they were instead running businesses like, you know exploiting the people who came in to ask for forgiveness of their sins and they're selling them the pigeons that they were meant to bring themselves. And I don't know, but the purpose of the temple had been perverted. When the purpose of your home, your own personal temple becomes perverted, start flipping tables. It's time to make a change there because your home is not a burden. It's not supposed to be a source of stress. It is a blessing and is meant to be a source of peace. If your home isn't bringing you peace, it's not doing its job. Okay? This doesn't mean that, you know, you're wrong or there's anything wrong with you. It means your home is not doing its job correctly. You are the home manager. Okay? This is like a boss discovering that their employee is not doing the job they hired them to do. You know, not necessarily firing them is the right option. It doesn't make you a bad boss. You're not a bad home manager. You just didn't realize what was going on. But now it's time to make the changes. 
It's time to kick it in gear. It's time to see where the errors occurred, where the misalignment happened, and get it together so that you can start enjoying moments of peace. Start enjoying your life. Stop feeling so bogged down, burdened, and stressed out all of the time. All right, I wanted to share with you a lot of the practical tips and thought shifts that have really helped me on this journey of overcoming my hatred of cleaning, okay? So for one thing, understanding that my home is meant to serve me, I'm not meant to serve my home. Um, I've heard Ali Casalza quote Annie Dillard so many times, it's ingrained in my head, how you spend your days is how you, is of course how you spend your life. Do I want to spend my whole life doing something I dislike? Do I want to spend my whole life gritting my teeth and cleaning my house? Or do I want to find something that works for me? Do I want to figure this out and make everything easier so that I'm not spending all my time doing this? So one, I want to do less time cleaning because I don't enjoy it. And two, I want to learn how to do it with love in my heart because even if I'm only cleaning a few hours a day or a few minutes a day, I should say, I, I don't want to be bitter about it. So how do we overcome that? How do we fix that? What do we do? For one thing, I've discovered that when it comes to cleaning, my brain works in a very ADHD way. I have a very much of a all over the place, cannot focus on one thing, start one thing, and then shift to a new thing. Um, and for a long time, I fought that. And I have recently discovered in paying attention to myself that fighting the squirrel brain was actually causing me to do less. Now, I know some people will start one cleaning task, go to the next, and then end up never finishing anything at all. But to me, I'd be going to start a load of laundry and then see that, like, the toilet paper roll needed refilled or, like, the the hand soap needs refilled or the, you know, I need to also vacuum in here. And I would tell myself, no, complete the task you came in here to do. Don't get squirrel brained. Don't get distracted. Do what you came in here to do. And then I would do what I came in there to do. And then I would forget the other task ever needed done. And I would not come back to do that task. Now, when I stopped fighting that distraction, I come in to start a load of laundry. I see that, you know, the floor also needs vacuumed. Now I stop, put my task on pause, vacuum the floor, and then get back to what I came in there to do. Or I walk out of the room and whatever triggered me to realize I had to go start a load of laundry triggers me again because I will come across it again. (laughs) You know, like sometimes it's in, you find a sock on the floor and you're like, I need to start laundry. Or you find your empty basket. I need to go start laundry. You'll come across something again that reminds you to go back to that original task. At least for me, I stopped fighting the way my brain is trying to work because it was working for me and I was working against it. Another thing is I had to overcome the thoughts that uh, my mom put in my head. See, my mom tried to raise me right with with this really great work ethic of um, don't do anything unless you're gonna do it right. You know, do it right the first time you're gonna have to do it again. And you know, that's really great for her to have said that to me, but my, my brain didn't process that correctly, apparently. Um, so instead of doing a job right, I mean, I do do jobs pretty right. I'm, I'm a really good worker. I am. I'll be honest about that. When I'm doing the job for someone else, I do a really great job. But at home, when it comes to a chore, I don't want to be doing. A lot of times I'm going to try to cut corners. I'm going to, you know, try to duck out early. Or I have three small boys running around distracting me. And, you know, the chances of me completing a task tend to be very low. Um, My mom tried to tell me to do the job correctly. But she accidentally put in this loophole of 
if you're not going to do it correctly, don't do it at all. So a piece of me latched onto that, just don't do it at all. And it turned into this sick form of perfectionism and procrastination where if I was not going to complete the task, if I knew I wasn't going to do it 100%, I would do 0%. I would just not start. I would put it off for later. Um, this was an issue with me in my shower for a very long time because cleaning the shower can be a pretty big task. You know, it's, it's a lot of body usage to get all over and you get your feet wet and you know, your fingers get all pruny doing it. And it's something I just really don't enjoy too much. And it's a big task. And for the longest time, I was like, well, I'm not going to finish that. So I'm just going to have to do it later. Um, Cause I tend to notice it at bath time when I'm washing the kids, that's when it needs cleaned. Um, and I can probably have like two minutes to clean it once they get out. That's not enough time to do the whole thing. Cause I got to go get them ready for bed. When I started realizing that I don't have to do it perfectly and I do not have to complete the task in order to start the task. You can do things in segments, in pieces. Three days I had my shower fully cleaned in just two to five minute segments. Every time the boys got out of their bath, I would just clean one little section of it. And I could not believe in my eyes that, wow, It was so simple, but I put it off for so long because I had this cognitive distortion stuck in my head that if I wasn't going to do it perfectly, I shouldn't do it at all. Much of life is imperfect. Nature is imperfect. Nothing is cookie cutter clean and perfect in nature. And for us to try to perfect things is very silly and it is very often our downfall um sends us spiraling sends us thinking that we're we're not enough we're not doing this well when your standards are just impossible don't break your heart over impossible standards that you created another thing that has helped me Do you ever do this where you say, I will start this new thing once I catch up on dot, dot, dot? I've done that a lot. I've come across like, you know, when I got into decluttering and stuff, a lot of times I'd be like, oh, well, I'll declutter the kitchen after I catch up on dishes. I will, I'll go through my closet after I catch up on laundry. And here's the silly thing about that is when you're not caught up, I mean, first off, you'll never actually be caught up. Um, These are ongoing tasks. As long as you're eating and wearing clothes, you will always need to wash dishes and wash laundry again and again and again. It is like eating and wearing clothes. The cleanup process happens as the, um, the usage happens. Like you'll never be done wearing clothes. So you'll never be done doing laundry. You'll never be done eating forever. So you'll never be done washing dishes. I mean, until the day you die, of course. Um, But yeah. So I always had this idea in my head that I had to catch up before I could, before I could do another project. Um, But you'll never actually be totally caught up. So you're really just putting off your projects forever. Um, You're creating new stress because every time you see that, you're not only thinking, oh, I have to do dishes. You're thinking, I have to do dishes and then I can start my project. If the project's going to be fun for you or it's something like absolutely needs to get done, just do it and then do your dishes or your laundry. They'll still be there. And let me add this in there. If that project is decluttering, do it while you're behind on dishes and laundry. Because here's the thing, if you have gone a while without doing laundry, then you've already worn all of your favorite pieces. You've already worn what fits you best. And there's less in your closet right now. And everything in your closet is what you haven't wanted to wear in how long since you did laundry. Be practical about this. Now is the time to clean out what's in your closet. 
because those are backup clothes mostly or special occasion clothes. If you've gone two weeks without doing laundry, anything left in your closet or drawers is, if it's in season, it is up for donation, you know? It's a good time to go through it when it's not packed out with things that you love. Um, and your, your kitchen too, if you're behind on dishes, it's a good time to go look at what dishes don't we actually need? What's just taking up cabinet space? Um, cause if you've got a sink full of dishes that need to go and it's going to fill your dishwasher, that's probably enough dishes to have. Um, I mean, typical rule of thumb is you really only need one type of dish per person in your house. Uh, any more than that, and you're just asking to do dishes all of the time. Um, or to do massive piles of dishes. Okay. So, don't wait until things change to do something new. Something new is the change. All right. If you're trying to create routines, rhythms, trying to clean up, declutter, organize, you can't just wait until something changes and you're magically caught up on your regular chores. Um, doing that project is going to be the something new that's going to help you to stay caught up a little bit better. Um, you know, like how likely are you to clean your kitchen and feel good about cleaning your kitchen when it's already clean or when your cabinets are freshly painted? Something new and exciting kind of like re-energizes you when you walk in the room, whether it's decluttering or painting cabinets or whatever. Um, walking into a space that feels new and fresh gives a new and fresh energy. And that energy is going to help you do your regular chores. It's going to help you to feel more excited to do them. Like I hate doing dishes, but right now my sink has been empty for like four days in a row. My counters have been clear for like three days. And, you know, I finally cleaned out under my sink. Like I mentioned in a previous episode, I was going to go do, I actually did it. It was disgusting. I will, I will spare you the details. Oh, almost burned my house down. It was bad. Um, but anyways, it feels good to go in there now. And I, I'm like ready to just keep the dishwasher going so that I can keep that sink empty because it feels good to be in there when it looks like this. And that new energy, instead of walking into the mess that makes me cringe and want to walk away immediately, I'm just like, oh, this is a nice space. Let me do my part to take care of it right now. That's what's going on. So do the thing. The new thing is that change you need to, to shift your energies and to get excited about keeping it cleaner. Um, it becomes much less work. So one other thing is not calling them chores anymore. Chores suck. No one wants to do chores. Um, I call them home care tasks, which it's a lot more to say, and I thought it at first, but after I read the book by Casey Davis, um, How to Keep House While Drowning, highly recommend. I listen to it on audiobooks, and honestly, I like to listen to people talk about cleaning while I clean, so just listening to it on audiobook, like, motivated me to do a lot of cleaning, um, but... At first, I fought calling them home care tasks instead of chores uh, because chores is so much more simple and it's what I've always grown up calling them. But the more I kept calling them chores after the fact, that thought would always come up in my mind of this cringy, just chores are gross. Call it something else. And so I started calling it home care tasks and it definitely feels better because I want to take care of my home don't want to do chores. I want to take care of the home. Um, and I want to set my home up in a way that serves me instead of me constantly serving it, you know? So I hope a lot of this was helpful and beneficial. 
and I hope that it helps shed some light on how you do home care. Um, thanks for being here with me today. Hey friends, so we chatted a little bit today about decluttering and I forgot to mention to you that I have a quick declutter guide. You see, I tend to think that everyone just knows everything I have available to help you. Um, but that's not true. So I have the quick declutter guide in my Etsy shop. It is 99 cents. Um, it's just, it's a month of tasks, four weeks to get you started decluttering. Um, it's focused every day on a different area of your house, just 10 minute tasks each day. So in one month, you could make a major impact if you really focused for 10 minutes a day in all the right places. And that is available to you in my Etsy shop. I can link it in the description below, or you can find it at meanttobloom.etsy.com and go check out all the listings I have available for you to help you out around the house with your self-love and your mental health. Um, there's a lot of good stuff over there and more to come in the future. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of I Get To. It really does mean the world to me to have you here. But are you ready to take this a step farther? Check the description below this episode and grab the Happy Mom Mindset mini guide. It's totally free to you and it's not just for moms, by the way. Then hop onto Instagram. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Share your screenshot. Tag me, Britt Clarkson. And if any part of this has resonated with you, I so, so appreciate if you'd leave me a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts. It really is just the only way podcasts get seen. And then share this on social. Text it to your bestie. You're part of a movement now. We're here to change the minds of moms everywhere. It doesn't have to be just this hard, hot mess thing anymore. We get to enjoy our lives, guys. Let's go.